So, I guess we can start. So, welcome to my talk about GPU pass-through with Beehive. Um, before I start with my presentation, let me introduce myself. So, I'm Corbin Kröner, I'm a software developer working for back of automation and I'm focusing on x86 technologies and hypervisor technologies and I'm a FreeBSD source committer since uh, 2022. Um, yeah, and uh, at Backoff we're doing industrial automation. So we have a product line ranging from um, industrial PCs over I.O. terminals and also motor drives. And um, yeah, all those is con controlled by our control software. And um, yeah, that's the motivation because we um, yeah, like to use GPU pass-through with Beehive because um, we are using a Windows system for more than 25 years. Um, and um, yeah, our control system, which is a software which is called Twinket, is integrated into Windows and runs on Windows. And But now we want to run our control system in FreeBSD but our customers are used to Windows and want a Windows interface and want to run their Windows tools on Windows. So we like to have a machine which uh, has as user interface a Windows virtual machine. And um, um, yeah, underneath of it, uh, FreeBSD should run with our controls software. Okay, so um, yeah, for my talk I would like to start with a live demonstration, then shortly discuss the current state, and then um, how to um, yeah, and then discuss how to use GPU pass through that um, so that everyone else can test it, and at the end uh, a short um, yeah, question answer round. Okay, so let's start with a um, live demonstration. So. Therefore, I have a system. Oh. Okay, so I have a system which is connected to a KVM switch, and um, yeah, I've also connected to a shell uh, over SSH to control the system. So, in the first step, which we can look up, is that this. Um, system is running uh, FreeBSD 14, so it's, um, as it's currently not released, it's an alpha version of FreeBSD. But as you will see, um, yeah, the GPU pass-through still works on FreeBSD 14. Um, it's not fully working on FreeBSD 14, because one thing you have to do is update um, the firmware of Beehive. So um, the firmware is in... Um, in the ports tree un under this utils edk2 and there I have a public branch on our git repository um, yeah which is at github dash backoff dash freebsd ports and there I have a branch um, which um, yeah, updates edk2 port to enable fully enable GPU pass through okay so um, first of all um, before we can start GPU pass-through, it's like any other PCI pass-through. We have to detach um, so um, oops. If we look at our PCI devices, we have at slot 2 the v v VGA PCI device, so our graphics card. So in the first step, like if you're doing normal PCI pass-through, you have to detach the driver. So I'm detaching it from the USB device and the um, graphics device. And as a next step, you have to set the PPT driver, which is required for the PCI pass-through. So I'm doing it now for both devices. And then uh, yeah, I've prepared a small script to run um, GPU pass through, and um, yeah, the most important line is here, where you add the um, yeah graphic card, which is at slot two, to the um, 
Beehive command line. Um, there are some other options which are required, but I will talk about them later. So, and if you now start the VM, you can see at the KVM switch that, um, yeah, first of all, the UFI starts up. And, yeah, after some time, so it's a Windows virtual machine. So we have to wait a moment until it boots. Okay, so here we are, here's the Windows desktop, and um, now to check that we're really running on a graphics card, we can, for example, start a graphical load. So I've picked up the Fermark benchmark, and if we start the stress test, so, yeah, I'm not sure if it's uh, large enough, but you should see here that uh, our frames per second are around uh, 200 and yeah, this wouldn't be possible if we have an emulated graphics card. Um, so as you can see, this should work. Okay, so... Yeah, so... oh. So um, in preparation of my talk, I did a screenshot of this. And as you can see here, uh, we have 200 uh, frames per second. So the GPU pass-through is working. OK, so let's start with what is supported on FreeBSD 14. And um, so the short answer is on 14, we are supporting AMD graphic cards and Intel graphic cards, but not NVIDIA graphic cards. Um, but um, yeah, there are some issues. So for example, on the NVIDIA graphic cards, many of the cards have a hardware issue that they can't reset uh, the card properly. And yeah, this means that um, if you start up your uh, virtual machine, it works once. But if you reboot your, v your VM, it won't work properly. Yeah, and on Intel, as I already said, you have to update the EDK2 port, but there are uh, already some patches online and I'm working on um, merging this too. And a bit longer answer is if you're looking at um, AMD and Intel's um, integrated and dedicated graphic cards. So I've tested on the Ryzen V1000 system if um, GPU pass-through is working on integrated AMD cards, but it seems to fail. And it even fails on QEMU, so it looks like other hypervisors have the same issues too. And um, another, um, yeah, so and for the Intel dedicated graphic cards, I don't know which the current state is because I've never tested it and never heard that somebody tries to do that. I do not even know if other hypervisors support it, so we have to see what the current state there is. Okay, so let's start with our how-to. So if one of you would like to use GPU pass-through, and the, um, the good answer is, and the, um, yeah, it's basically the same as GPU pass-through. That's really nice because, um, yeah, I think most of Beehive, the Beehive users have already used PCI pass-through and know how it works. But um, yeah, it's mostly like uh, G PCI pass-through, so it's not always that easy. Um, yeah, because the problem is um, it has often some constraints which you have to take care of, and if you do that, um, yeah, it's like any other PCI pass-through. Okay, so um, on those constraints require a ROM file, a GOP driver, the firmware config interface, and uh, a proper Beehive configuration. And um, yeah, to, to understand this more, I will 
now continue to explain what the RUM, GOP and uh, FEMA config is. So let's start with uh, RUM. So it's, um, yeah, it's a driver with a chip on the hardware ex itself. So if you have a graphics card, there's a small flash chip on it. And if you plug in the uh, graphic card in your system, the um, UFI reads these flash chip and uh, executes the driver. And it's responsible to initialize your hardware because um, you can't build a UFI BIOS which is capable of initializing any kind of hardware, um, especially um, complex hardware like GPUs or some complex NICs. And it can also um, add a UFI runtime driver, for example, if you want to pixie boot from a NIC or if you have want to have graphics output, um, you need the um, ROM driver. And that's the answer for what is a GOP driver. It's basically the graphics driver from for the UFI. So if you boot a system, you first start with the UFI stage, then with the bootloader stage, and then the OS stage. And to get graphical output in the early stages of the boot, you need the GOP driver. Um, yeah, and then at some later stage, the OS driver um, continues to utilizing the GPU. Um, yeah, and this GOP driver is mostly included in the RAM of the graphics card. And so it's not really required for GPU pass-through, but it's really useful because um, yeah, when you're installing an operating system, um, you mostly have the problem that the installer don't have uh, graphics driver so you can't install uh, operating system without a GOP driver um, and for example yeah if you want to use the loader or grub menu on your virtu virtual machine um, you also have to use the GOP driver okay and last but not least um, the FEMA config it's basically just an <coughs> interface which is used for um, host and guest communication. So it was developed by QEMU and it's used to pass some information from the hypervisor to the guest. And it's mainly used for, um, yeah, used by the firmware and that's why it's called firmware configuration. So for example, you can add uh, pass ACPI tables to the guest or you can specify a boot order or yeah, make uh, many, m much more things with it. Okay, so now that we know the basics, let me start with the AMD GPU pass-through, which is a bit simpler and easier than um, Intel GPU pass-through. So in the first step, you have to extract the ROM from your graphics card and um, yeah, on Linux, you can use the ZFS um, to extract it. On Windows, there's a GPU Z tool. And unfortunately, on FreeBSD, it's not supported yet, or I'm not aware of any method for that. Um, so yeah, if you have a graphics card, um, somehow extract it from it, from another system, and then you can continue. And then in the <coughs> next step, you have to call uh, Beehive, and um, yeah, so let's start with the basic beehive command, which just adds an image, basically, it sets some flags and so on. So in the first step, we have to generate ACPI tables, um, because if the ACPI tables don't match your hardware, um, yeah, the GPU password won't work probably. So you have to um, add the minus A flag. Then you have to always boot with UFI. The reason for that is um, to make the ROM accessible for the operating system. It has to be executed by the UFI firmware. So we have to use the boot ROM. Um, yeah, and, this is, um, and there you have also to specify the firmware config option because otherwise the, the firmware config option is mainly useful to pass ACPI tables probably to the guest. And yeah, as a last step, you can just, um, you just have to add your pass-through device just as you normally do. 
And there, don't forget to add the ROM. So there's a ROM option, add the path to the ROM you have extracted in the first step, and that's it. Okay, let's go on to Intel. The first step is the same, extract the ROM. But uh, on Intel it's a bit difficult because sometimes it's not possible. And um, there's also the Acorn hypervisor, which is a hypervisor utilized by Intel. And there they say you should ask your mainboard vendor or Intel to receive a GOP driver. Um, yeah, so f you have to try if this works. Maybe you're lucky, maybe if yeah, maybe not. I don't know. But um, it's not required that you have the ROM file, but it's really helpful. Um, yeah, this are the good news. Okay, so as the next step, we... Um, yeah, also have to call beehive and we also start with a basic beehive command. Yeah, you also have to generate ACPI tables. You also have to use uh, a UFI ROM. You also have to use firmware config. You also had to add the password device. And yeah, now it starts to get a bit more complicated because um, on Intel systems, the GPU is always connected to slot 2 and some drivers are expecting that the device is connected to slot 2. So it's really required that you assign the device to slot 2, otherwise some re drivers refuse to work. Okay, yeah, then you can <coughs> also add the ROM file, similar to AMD. And what is also required by um, yeah, Intel GPUs is an LPC device. Um, <coughs> which mostly is always added to Beehive, but um, yeah. And here is also important to have it at slot 31, um, because otherwise some driver, yeah, just fail. And what is also important is that um, the LPC bridge has the same PCI IDs like your host system, because some um, your driver are checking the PCI IDs of the LPC device to identify your platform y you're running on. And if they see, oh, this platform is not supported, they refuse to work. So, um, yeah, therefore we have those config options in Beehive to match the uh, host uh, PCI IDs. Okay, and then that's it. So thanks for your attention. Michael? What is the state of OPMS performance <coughs> as a firmware ROM, if any? Yes, so um, I've already posted some patches on Fabricator to um, solve these issues with Intel uh, GPU pass through. Um, as I showed in my live demonstration, I have a public branch where you can just um, fetch the port three from and build your EDK2. So yeah, hopefully we can soon merge this and then it will be available on 14. Yes? Is the only issue you ran into with NVIDIA the reset problem? Yeah. Other issues with NVIDIA as well? So what I found out on NVIDIA is um, that you have to add some quirks to Beehive. So if you're looking in the QEMU, um, QEMU uh, source code, they are doing the same because, for example, the config space of the PCI device is mirrored into the MMIO space, so you have to trap these um, special uh, MMIO space for NVIDIA. I, um, yeah, but I've tested it a bit, but um, not much, and it, I'm not sure what is failing currently. Um, and it could be that um, legacy PCI interrupts are not supported by Beehive yet. And b because yeah, it's required by some graphic cards. So it requires some further investigation.
hide the package as as the as the top layer management? Uh, no. Oh, repeat. So th the question was, uh, if we can um, achieve this uh, option with the VMB Hive package, and um, I don't think so, um, because you have you need really fine grain um, um, options for that. Um, I'm not sh quite sure if VMB Hive already supports the option format. Um, yeah, so that would it would require some patches to VMB Hive. Yes? Uh, are you working on some kind of uh, implementation? Like, you know, maybe I, I was thinking about uh, the virtual VL, for instance, like having uh, VM use the VM's host, I suppose, uh, mm -hmm. the VMBS, sorry, use the the hardware, the graphics hardware for like three D rendering and stuff like that. Um, how is this related? Uh, is it related at all? And are you because I know there is some work about um, virtual VR. It's the same thing that seems like a lot of people are interested. In. Uh, I don't know if this is related to that or if there is no. no so yes, this pa completely passes the. So this work completely passes the GPU um, to the guest, so the guest has full access to the um, device, and there are some so um, yeah, there are some technologies. I think like SRIOV to um, pass um, to, to, to split a device and assign it to multiple um, users. Yes, this is for one guest only. An SRIOV um, would be for multiple guests, for example. And I think, I'm not sure about the current state on Beehive, if, Be if Beehive supports this. But um, yeah, if it supports um, SRIOV for, for other devices like Nix or something like that, it should support it for GPUs too. Um, yeah, but. Um, yeah, and besides that, for Intel, there's are two technologies which are called GVTG and GVTS to somehow share the graphics card, but I'm not currently working on that. Okay, so any other questions? Then thank you for your attention.